Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I guess three's a charm. I tried twice before and I couldn't go live. So here we are. Today is day 10. It is a very dreary, miserable, rainy day here in northern Idaho. But I've got lots of things to be grateful for. So for those of you that are new um, to our channel and, and joining us, um, this is day 10 of my November 30-day Gratefully Prepared Challenge. I'm challenge, challenging you to be uh, more grateful and to see the things in your life that you should be grateful for. Uh, don't miss the gratitude, basically, um, that's happening in front of you. So many of us walk around with blinders. Uh, when you are uh, more grateful in your life and you see the positive, you are happier, more, more joyful, um, and everything just kind of follows suit behind that. You learn better, you function better, you're a better wife husband, mother, father, whatever the case may be. In addition to that, um, it's our life goal here at Trier Wilderness, uh, we feel, led to educate you and train you and share our knowledge on the different things that we do here on our homestead that we feel are life skills and that will take us into the future, uh, regardless what it throws at us. So... That's what I am doing for 30 days. We are on day 10. I can see a bunch of you are out there joining me, so let me know um, who's out there, where you're from, and uh, what you're grateful for today. Today, I am grateful for this lousy weather, believe it or not, because it enables me to do the things that I've been waiting all year to do. Our spring and our summer are really crazy here. So is our fall and our hunting season, but once we hit this point, um, I can start working on things that I don't have time for the rest of the year. So my knitting is coming back out. I will be working on um, my elk ivories to turn them into jewelry and uh, most likely brain tanning a hide moving forward here. I have not filled my uh, deer tag yet, but when I do, I would like to brain tan that hide and take you along on the process of that. So lots of things going on. The other thing is um, that's a really great time right now to do is gardening, planning your garden for the spring and um, even getting some of the fall things in the ground if you haven't. There's certain things that you can grow through the cooler months and uh, if you have a greenhouse you can prepare for that too and keep things going and I will be sharing more on that and have some great resources for you upcoming on that. But I love, I love to be able to knit. I've knitted for a while, but last year, I mentioned my friend Helen yesterday, who saved me again yesterday. I'm feeling so, so much better. Each day I'm progressing, and I'm very thankful for my health and my strength and my healing. And Helen was kind enough last year to teach me how to make socks. I've been wanting to make socks for forever because I want, I want to be able to do useful things that, again, will take me into the future. My guys go through socks like crazy. Wool socks last longer, and they are great for what we do out here with our hunting and our trapping and just our outdoor activities, snowshoeing and so forth, and just the winter cold. So I was really blessed to have her teach me how to do that last year. So I am working on some socks for the guys, and I've got some white wool that I would like to uh, make a scarf or a hat for myself. So, And I also like making gifts. So it's just a great thing to do, uh, being able to make things from scratch and being able to do things for others. Also having that skill set that will take you into the future again. Hi, Rachel. Glad you're joining me again. I'm not sure how today will go. Today's probably going to be a short and sweet one because I've got some things I've got to do. But today I have a couple questions for you. Um, but first, I just want to challenge you to use this time of year to educate yourself, learn new skills, do things that you don't normally do, take the time to enjoy learning. Um, I love learning new things, and um, the TrierWildernessAcademy.com will also have a knitting class in there for beginners as well as learning socks. So I encourage you to sign up if you haven't. We have a waiting list going. Uh, the doors will be reopening. And you can sign up for that at TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. Now, as far as today's topic, we've been talking about um, from scratch cooking. And I want to ask you guys, how do you guys shop? Um, if you're watching this after the fact, please 
um, interact with me because I still can uh, see the commenting and I will definitely communicate with you but do you shop daily for your family's food needs or do you have a supply of food at home that you work out of I'm really curious because um, I know there's a lot of people out there that shop daily that would kill me I hate shopping plus I'm so used to having a food pantry I grew up having a food pantry where my mom had extra sugar and flour and different staples of things that we always used on hand and it was just to me that was a normal mindset I've never done anything other than this is, is having food available to make and and keeping things in the freezer uh, canning food so this is a norm for me but I know there's many people out there that feed their family on what they go to the grocery store that's that day f and make and like I said I just couldn't do that Rachel says she has a supply at home and then shops for items I need that I don't stock sure and I have found with our lifestyle here in our location that it's really important for me to stock everything. We've gone through some interesting winters. Last year we were stuck back here for three days because we had four feet of snow and our backhoe was broken. So we were just in need of um, a little bit of assistance last year and had a bulldozer come out and plow us out. Our very first year here we were stuck back here for eight and a half weeks. Now keep in mind we probably could have gotten out with our vehicles but there was no reason to and there was no point to and it was oh gosh that was the best winter ever. The biggest and hardest part of that year was that the first time we did go out we had to take the mountain boy to the Spokane airport and it happened to be spring break and talk about culture shock because we've been by ourselves for eight and a half weeks so then to be out and have a mob scene it was it was it was a little much but you never know what your winners are gonna bring um, you know you might be in town things are different but for us we never know what's gonna happen next week we are um, expecting a good bit of snow but we're always prepared one way or the other we have a snowmobile to get us in and out of here we have snowshoes to get us in and out of here but I have I stock up in August on uh, and and sometimes into October because we'll do our hunting in October um, I stock up that at that point in our year to fill my pantry with all the staples I need and there is never anything that I don't have. I have organic powdered coconut milk so that we always have milk. I have oils, uh, organic non-GMO oil so that I can make salad dressings. I have enough spices to last me into the new year, into way past spring. You know, I stock up on the things I know I need to make everything I need for my family. And, I, and it's a process, trust me, it's a process. The first year is, and even the first two years can be trial and error till you figure out all the things you need. And you may not be to the level I am where you make absolutely everything you utilize from scratch. Um, and and it's, that again is a process in getting to that point. But I really love being able to do that and not really having to worry about being to the grocery store for things. I shopped yesterday. I got bananas and some grapes and some avocados. You know, those are things that I don't have on hand. But, you know, it's kind of in the winter months, it's kind of a, um, a bonus to be able to have those. So, but the raw ingredients are the things I stock up on. And I want to, like, kind of instill that into you that if you do not... Um, have a food pantry that you keep available and you do shop every day it's something you should really consider because like I said the other day just take for example last year for us two of our highways failed on us in spring because we had a lot of snow a lot of snow melt off and a lot of rain in spring and it caused mudslides that covered the roads it also caused some of the roads to erode and totally slide and uh, away and disappear that we didn't have an actual roadway to continue driving on and it just so happened that the one road that failed was on one end of the valley and the other road that failed was at the other end of our valley so the big trucks couldn't get in to deliver food and and uh, feed to the stores in our, our closest town so you know things start to diminish you know weird things happen not that our whole food supply would go but you never know what's gonna happen mother nature does all kinds of odd things and it can affect us in great ways so 
if you don't even have like dried rice and dried beans in your pantry or canned goods, and keep in mind if you have canned goods that you have a, a non-electric can opener so that you can get into the cans easily. I mean, there's certainly ways to get into them, but th it wouldn't be easy. These are things you got to think about. And it's something that you can sit down and make a list and, and start to progressively stock up on. Remember, your budget is important, so you should only be stocking up on what you can afford. There's no point putting all this stuff on a credit card that you're going to owe money and interest on. It could be a progressive thing, but making a list of the staples you need is really important for all your baking needs, your sugar, your flour, your um, cornstarch, your uh, baking soda, uh, baking powder, sea salt, all those different things, your chocolate chips. I just got a 50-pound box of chocolate chips for our winter months. So um, just to give you an idea how we stock up, I typically have um, anywhere from 50 to 150 pounds of flour. Uh, and then I also have gluten-free flour in the same quantities. So, And sugar. I have salt in the same quantities. So... And baking soda as well, because baking soda I use to clean with, not only to bake and to deodorize with. So, it's learning what your family needs, what you can get by with, how often you're able to shop. I prefer to shop every six months if I can for my bulk foods, and even longer if possible. What I want to suggest is if you haven't gotten the preparedness worksheets, go to treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter and download the preparedness worksheets. On those worksheets, you can start laying things out and figuring out the quantities you need to get you by for so many months. I stock up on our butter. I stock up on, I have lard. I have ghee available. So I have backups for everything as well. And I just feel it's... <laughs> peanut calories back here and I just want to really instill this in you to have excess food available if you're in a, an apartment and you have limited space I have a bunch of friends um, that uh, blog like I do the apartment prepper.com is a great friend of mine and she lives in an apartment and and shares how she does things in her place she stores things under her bed in her closets Uh oh I will show you the art of key. <laughs> I've got to go. Okay. Hi, everybody. See you. Be safe. Yeah. I'll you see you too. later on then. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> okay. The art of ghee. You never know what's going to happen on my homestead or who's going to come behind me and have something to share. <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, I mentioned uh, the, the worksheets, I believe. So you want to download those. You want to keep track of what you need um, on those worksheets. <laughs> How about it, Rachel? Um, the other thing is um, those worksheets have the medical sheets that we talked about a couple days ago. Um, they're really handy. It's a great place to start if your mindset isn't thinking on having a good stash of medical needs, food needs, all the things you need if you can't leave your house or if you're limited on replenishing things. So we just, we, all of our ingredients are dry ingredients, staples that we can pull off the shelf or out of food safe buckets, which food safe buckets reminds me to tell you something. Um, if you're looking for food safe buckets, go to your grocery store or to local bakeries. They get a lot of things in brought in in food safe buckets and they typically resell the buckets and that's where I get a lot of the buckets I store my food in so uh, keep that in mind as a resource for you and um, if you're looking for coffee grounds for your gardening as well you can go to the local coffee shops and ask them to hang on to their coffee grounds we'll talk more about that later but that just popped in my head and I wanted to share it okay so Something else I forgot to mention when I was talking about blessings was um, I'd love for you to check out um, a video my husband and I did. Um, all the links are down below in the description and both on Facebook Live and on YouTube. But we did a video on, on just some of the miracles that have happened on our homestead and the reason that we feel so blessed. And I, would, I just think it would be a great video. I think many of you will enjoy it. And you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash God's Miracles. But 
I want to encourage you guys to really think about your food supply and the things you have. Also, what you're putting in your body. We've talked before about the GMOs and the toxic chemicals and the varying things in our processed foods, all the preservatives, and just how well, how much better you will feel and how um, much your health will improve, um, how you will lose weight um, by eating a better diet and paying more attention to what you're putting into your body. Um, Rachel, you will appreciate this. I made a whoopee cake. I made some whoopee pies, but I was limited on my time, so I made um, a whoopee cake and um, the icing, only I did everything with organic ingredients, including organic powdered sugar, and I'm going to share this with you. Organic, whoa, that lighting is so bad. There we go. Um, organic shortening, and you can also use lard, but... Um, so there are ways to turn some of our most favorite foods that are that can be so deadly um, as far as the pooling just regular ingredients off the shelf. But I eliminated Crisco a long time ago for lard or um, coconut oil or organic um, shortenings. So and butter too. I will never give up butter. So anyway, um, you can easily convert your current recipes into healthier um, options. So, Mountain Ben sneaking some coffee. <laughs> Your mother will love to see you. Hi, Mom. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I am always adapting recipes. I am always converting recipes. And um, the guys said that it tasted just as good and, and something else that was a little different with my whoopee cake was that it was gluten free. So it probably tasted, the, the um, cake itself wasn't quite exactly the same but the icing was awesome. So keep that in mind. I will share um, some of my recipes moving forward. There's a couple we've been making this week. We made uh, no bake cookies. Uh, which are awesome, great thing to quickly make and to grab. Um, that's hence the 50 pounds of chocolate chips, and I have about, I don't know, 10 pounds of cocoa. So, or it might even be more. But anyway, I know what my guys like, and that's what I focus on when I shop. I know what I like and what I need, and that's how we um, make our lists and, and make sure we have all the ingredients to cover all bases, so that if I can't get to the store to get salad dressings, mayonnaise, all, uh, mustard, all of that stuff, I make my own. Um, you can find a lot of those recipes in my cookbook, which you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer, and also on our website. But I'm going to jump off of here, guys. I hope this was helpful and insightful. And um, maybe what I will do is in a blog post coming up, I will create a list of all the different things I have in my pantry so you guys can take a look and see if it's something that um, you need to add. or um, And maybe you can share your input on some of the things you keep in your pantry so um, that you can also um, make certain things that are uh, favorites of your families. Um, I did want to say one other thing. For those of you that are joining me, if you're not leaving comments below, I would love it if you go to treyerwilderness.com slash G dash P and leave your comments there. This is an interactive challenge. I want you guys to be active in it. I want you guys to tag Treyer Wilderness and, and also um, use the hashtags gratefully prepared as well as Treyer Wilderness. And on your posts on Instagram so that we can track what everybody's up to and how they are getting involved. But be interactive because there will be a giveaway at the end of this and it, it is um, the, the pot is thickening as far as some of the giveaway items. There might be multiple giveaways. So be interactive. Join me. Share this with people. Get more people involved. And um, tomorrow we will um, look forward to doing probably some gardening information, um, but we will see. It's always, I never know, from day to day. I like going off the cuff, and I've got so much to share, so I certainly won't go without information. Oh, hi, Shelly. Good to see you today also. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. I actually have a date with the mountain boy. We are heading to town to do a little thrifting and to do some errands. So I will catch you guys tomorrow, and you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your family, and be grateful. God bless.